Hey everyone, this is Wobby Wallaby, and I'm here with my brand new Soulbinder account, so I can experience this class as a brand new free-to-play player. I give you my thoughts on this class and my farming recommendations, so you can start earning Zenny efficiently from day one. In this video, I'll cover the Soulbinder overview, attributes, skills, Acer Monument, gear, foods, guild buffs, adventure handbook, and farming spots. First is the Soulbinder overview. I've played a few magic classes on brand new accounts. Personally, I always found magic classes to be harder than physical classes. However, Soulbinder is good since it takes away two really annoying limitations with magic classes. First, many magic classes have skills that are elementally locked. For example, Arcane Master's Chain Lightning is Wind type, and Saint's Dark Shadow Slaughter is Dark type. It can get annoying when you want to farm certain creatures or hit bosses, since those are locked to those elements. Some skills like Esma and Eska can be converted to certain types using the skill Warm Wind. It lets you choose between Wind, Earth, Water, Fire, Holy, Dark, and Ghost. This means you can now take advantage of the target's weakness so it's much more flexible. For example, if I want to do double damage to a water monster, I would use Wind. Second, the passive skill Weight of Soul allows you to use size modifiers. Other magic classes cannot use popular size modifier cards like the Minoris or Desert Wolf cards to do extra damage to these targets. I've always found this to be really silly and didn't understand why devs would put such a huge restriction on magic users. Besides these limitations, I also find that Soulbinder can farm very efficiently. Farming efficiently is very important for the growth of your character, so I'm glad that Soulbinder has some great skills for it. It has two primary farming skills. First is Soul Impact, which is an AoE that casts very quickly, but this is stuck to the Ghost type. And the fourth job skill Eska, which is a slower AoE and does very well on fixed spawn spots and ideally two waves of monsters die to one cast of Eska. There are times when Eska can outdamage Soul Impact because you're taking advantage of the target's weakness. However, due to this slow cast time, using the skill alone will not yield great farming results. You need to use both skills to get the maximum farming results. For weekly instances, I think Soulbinder is fantastic. It has great burst potential, and I like that you can convert Eska and Esma to nuke bosses. Most bosses are large as well, so it's great being able to use size modifiers to deal with these tough bosses. If I were to choose a magic class for PvE, I'd definitely choose Soulbinder as my top pick. As I go through this guide, there are things I haven't unlocked on this character, such as advanced ruins, enhancements, or enchants. These things add a lot of variance, so I wanted to avoid that to make this character as vanilla as possible. Next are attributes. I'm using the default attributes given to me when I start Soulbinder. I think the allocation is fine. You need 30 decks to decrease the variable cast time by 1 second. With the current setup and gear, the variable cast time for the skills I use is as low as it will go. Unfortunately for skills like Soul Gathering, even if you added more decks, it won't go below 2 seconds. I would max int first, and if I needed more variable cast time reduction, then I would use decks. And finally I would put the rest into luck, since luck contributes to a Soulbinder's damage due to its skills. Next are skills. I'm using the default skills that were allocated for me. For farming, I think these allocations are fine. For occultist, warm wind is fantastic for changing the damage type of certain skills. Soul impact is my favorite skill for farming. It is quick and hits a large area. It is fixed to a ghost type though. If you unlock the Acer monument, you can also make this stronger and have a larger distance. Next is Soul Gathering. It's a nice skill since it increases your damage and ghost attack by 
The downside is the 2 second fixed cast time. Next is Mind Pierce. It is good for extra damage and explains why people would invest in luck. I still wouldn't put a lot into luck since I still find int more useful and has more damage modifiers associated with it. For channeler skills, the Soul Whisper skill is nice since it reduces your variable cast time. The fantastic passive skill is Weight of Souls, which allows size modifiers to work. Next, the skill E Stun is good for nuking, but not so much for farming. For Soulbinder skills, try to invest in Eska as much as possible. I have 8 points assigned to it, and I could have added more, but I'm just showing you that even with 8 skill points, it is still very powerful. Next is Acer Monument. Once you hit Growth Index 10, you'll get Contribution and Medals for Acer Monument. I prioritize getting Soul Impact Enhancement for more damage. There are 5 nodes. Then I got Soul Impact Eagle Eye, and there are 5 nodes for this, which will increase its range. Soul Impact is incredible for farming, which is why I chose to invest in this first. As you get more contribution, you can invest in other skills that are useful for you. The other Acer Monument nodes I would invest in are Soul Gathering Ghosts for more ghost attack percentage, Mind Pierce Enhancement for more true damage, Ignore M Death nodes, and depending what I'm hitting, I would choose the against small, medium, or large size so I can do more damage to those sized monsters. All of this is to make Soul Impact stronger so I can farm tougher monsters with it. Next is Gear. Since they introduced Ancient Equipment, that has definitely affected the way we gear up our characters when we start the game. They are so overpowered that you want to invest in them and do the weekly instances so you can get them as soon as possible. Since not everyone can get carried for these instances, I chose to buy novice level equipment from the Komodo NPC so that anyone could buy these, even if you do not do the weekly instance. The novice level gear do not have random attributes, but they are quite strong by themselves. I also choose not to refine them so I can make it as newbie friendly as possible. For offhand, I use the totem wood carving, which adds good magic damage. For armor, I use Old Windbreaker. The raw 500 magic attack is quite significant, especially when you start off the game and you have very low magic attack to begin with. For garment, the old fashioned robe for the magic ignore defense 12% is very good. For footgear, simple ankle boot provides 4% magic attack and a lot of int. For accessories, I use two flower bud hair clips. It has a great 200 magic attack and 5% magic attack. For weapon, the Epic Spirit Beacon Wand is fine. For head, the Echo of Souls is good. It provides magic damage plus 4%. You get this for free when you become a Soul Binder. For face, I use the Evil Eye for ignore magic defense plus 10%. This one's a little bit pricey, so I definitely save this as one of the final things to purchase. For mouth, I use the Abyss Whisper for the 3% magic attack. For back, I use the Parasite Swing for the 3% penetration and ignore magic defense plus 3%. Similar to the face, I would also put this as lower priority since you should purchase the Ancient Equipment first. For tail, I don't use any for farming. For PvE, you can just stick with the School Building Administrator, which you get as part of doing your Growth Index, and it provides 4% damage to MVP and mini monsters. It's a good idea to strengthen your weapons as well. For example, I can pay 5.7 million zenny to add 120 enhancements to the weapon. You can also gradually increase this level by level. After buying all this gear, I would save up for the plus 10 soul binder weapon, Devourer of Souls. It has plus 15% ghost attack, 
20% magic attack, damage to large monsters plus 15%, ignore magic defense plus 10%, and int and luck as well. On Global Endless Love, this costs 71 million. It's something you should definitely strive for as you farm. Next are foods. I go through foods in detail in this guide. The link will be in the description. This will let you know how to cook and consume foods. Since you're farming popular spots, you definitely want to eat a lot of zero-star foods so you have SP discharge. This will allow you to keep casting skills while having SP. Otherwise, you may have to play dead and you may lose your spot to other people who see that you're not farming anymore. If you're not on popular spots, it is okay to do play dead to recover your SP. Next are guild blessings and buffs. For this character, I haven't invested in guild buffs or got the vouchers for it yet. If I did, I would invest in wise blessings for more magic attack for prayers. For guild blessings, I would invest in magic penetration percentage. Next is my adventure handbook. This is to prove that this is indeed a brand new account. You can see I have a pitiful plus 10 magic attack and I'm at the scout level. Next are farming spots. I'm going to show a few farming spots and show the progression. For day one farming, I'm going to show you that I'm just using the epic spirit wand for farming. That's to show you that you don't even need any gear to start farming efficiently. So Impact is a very strong AoE skill, so it's great for us. I'll show you my character stats so you can see there's no hidden damage. This is literally the build that you get from day one. Next I show my Xenian bag. I show my starting combat time is at 30 combat time. I show the location I'm farming in for Glasshelm Culverts. This is a nice spot where Stings and Anolians spawn quickly. I show my skills. I'm using Soul Gathering, Soul Impact, and Play Dead. Make sure you unlock the Scout Adventure title so you have the option to stay alert. You don't want your character to run around. For this spot, it usually kills 2-5 to five monsters at a time. Thirty minutes have passed, and I'm at sixty combat time. I open my bag and Zenny. I do a quick sell of the garbage drops for more Zenny, and here is my summary. In thirty minutes of combat time, I get about one hundred sixty-eight thousand Zenny, and if I sell everything, two hundred sixty-six thousand Zenny. Once you get your fourth job skill, you can farm more efficiently. Next, this is the optimal spot on this map. It's definitely very competitive, but soul binders can kill things pretty efficiently, so oftentimes it's hard for people to steal this spot from you. I show my combat time is at 34 minutes. Here's my starting bag and Zenny. I'm wearing all my recommended gear, so it's much easier to one-shot everything. Here are my skills. I use Eska, Soul Impact, Soul Gathering, Warm Wind, which is set to Ghost, and Play Dead. I stay alert and start attacking all monsters. Oftentimes you'll be hitting multiple creatures at once, which is why this is the ideal farming spot on this map. Next, I show 30 minutes of combat time has passed. Here's my Zenny and drops. Here's my summary. I get about 246,000 Zenny, and if I sell everything, it's 391,000 Zenny. 
I had experimented with other maps, but the results weren't any better. Very few maps in this game have a fixed spawn spot and also is very dense. Harpies and Yuno was the spot that I had tried, but I earned 170,000 Razeni in 30 minutes, which is worse than the day one farming. The density and spawn rate just wasn't high enough on this map. Although it's good to know that soul linkers are powerful enough to farm here, but I wouldn't recommend it. Also, sometimes new players farm on the wasteland maps. And again, these are not very dense, so you'll run into the same problems. Sure, you'll get more EXP, but I find the raw zenny is worse. And personally, I always choose earning zenny over EXP. If you have enough zenny, you'll definitely be able to buy stuff that will make you much stronger. I would try to farm glass hump culverts as long as possible to maximize your zenny earn per day. Next, I'll do a full day farm on the optimal spot. I show my start in combat time. I listen to 30 minutes of music, which gives me 90 minutes of extra combat time. So normally you'll have 390 minutes per day, but I missed an extra minute of combat time yesterday, so that's why I have 391. I show my gear. I left the school building administrator tail on since I was doing some PvE. That only damages bosses, so it doesn't do anything for farming. All the other equipment are the same. Next for skills, I optimize this further. I only use Soul Impact, Eska, and Play Dead. With the full gear, you do not need Soul Gathering and Warm Wind. The less time you spend casting these buffs, the better you can farm. So get rid of those if you're strong enough. I show the optimal spot on the map and start farming. I stopped at 392 combat time. Someone else was on that spot as well. Normally I would farm longer, but for this video I'll cut it a bit shorter. Here's my zenny and drops. For farming one day, I got 4.8 million zenny, and of that, 3.4 million is raw zenny. Among the other classes, I'd say Soulbinder is definitely one of the top farming classes for newly made accounts. So this is great news for people starting a brand new account. In future videos, I'll continue doing the progressive build and continue showing new spots for you to farm efficiently in. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe.